What time is it? It's time for the children's cocktail hour. Come on in, everybody. Come into the clubhouse. It's 5 o'clock here on the West Coast and 8 o'clock on the East Coast, which means it's both children's bedtime hour and cocktail hour for all those of us who are adults who like to imbibe. So if there are any kitties in the room, go ahead and skedaddle out for just a moment, and we're going to have a little bit of adult time. Uh, today we're going to be making the Martinez cocktail. Now, what is Martinez, you say? Well, let me tell you. Just so happened Mr. Producer's grandfather's name was Curly Martinez, right? I think I got that right. Of course you got that right. Of course I got that right. <laughs> the look on your face was like... What? No, of course I got it right. So Curly Martinez, well, I don't know if you objected to calling him Curly or, or Gregorio. Um, so that was Joaquin's beloved tata, his beloved grandfather, and that just has to tie in with our book today, which is How to Babysit a Grandpa. Uh, a book that means a lot to Joaquin and I, simply because we have had the great fortune of being able to uh, babysit our lovely granddaughter, Emery, as often as we can. We just love spending time with her, and that's pretty much why we do this. Um, but the Martinez cocktail is a very, very old cocktail dating back to 1884. Now, it's got a lot of history to it. Um, most of it, like most every cocktail, is shrouded in myth and lies and uh, fabricated stories. But what I've heard was the Martinez was the precursor to the very popular martini. Uh, there were a group of businessmen in San Francisco that used to take the ferry back and forth across the bay over to the small town of Martinez. And their favorite drink at the bar just before boarding the, uh, the uh, ferry was uh, a drink called the Martinez because it was named after the town. And uh, those men were kind of called pluralistically the Martini. Uh, I don't know if that's true, and it shares some similarities between the Martini, uh, but uh, not entirely. That, the martini is based in, in a traditional London dry gin. The gin we're using tonight is kind of a rare, uh, very old formula Tomcat gin, which really fell out of favor a uh, uh, hundred years ago, uh, and is now making a resurgence, and it's one that I love. Um, so let's get to the drink. Kids are out, just as adults. It's nice to see everybody out there. This is an aromatic, so we're gonna be building it in our mixing glass. Uh, it is. Uh, something that includes two dashes of orange bitters. We're using Regan's number six. I'm going to call it three bitters, uh, three dashes, because I have not like these bitters. Um, and then we're using Luxardo's Maraschino liqueur. Uh, this is about an eighth of an ounce, so we're going to do just about a bar spoon, a little more than a bar spoon. And then it's an ounce and a half of sweet vermouth. Uh, this particular one, I like the coffee uh, vermouth, even though um, you could use uh, Dolan's or even um, uh, uh, Carpano Antica, which is typically my favorite. So that's an ounce and a half of the sweet vermouth, and then we're going to do an ounce and a half of the uh, Tomcat gin. For some reason, I tend to refer to this as walking knows as old Tom gin. I'm not sure why I do that always, but it is Tomcat. All right, so that has all our ingredients in there. We're gonna take some ice. Uh, now, one of the things I love to do when I'm mixing is to use large, whoops, wow, did you see that splash? I got my eye. Um, a large amount of big block ice that fits in there nicely. And this is beautiful. Um, by the way, I got a new uh, ice maker that does beautiful clear ice. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Um, in any case, we want to give this uh, about 50 uh, stirs, about 30 seconds. Or actually, what I like to do when I'm stirring with a, a drink is I just stir it until the exterior of the mixing glass starts to frost over. And that way I know it's properly chilled and properly diluted. Robin is glad to see us back. Oh, Robin, it's nice to see you. We're going to be back. They just took a little time off because there were other things happening in the world that seemed a little bit more important. And now that it looks like there's a resurgence of COVID, uh, we thought it's a good time to uh, kind of re-engage. Although I was telling Emery, COVID doesn't look like it's going to bring around forever. She was worried that it would be around forever. And I said, I suspect uh, things will go back to normal sometime after November 4th, um, when COVID is all taken care of. Um, 
All right, so we're going to take that and pour this into a coop, a nicely chilled coop. And normally you would uh, garnish this with a beautiful lemon uh, peel, but I didn't happen to pick up on it. I'm not going to chance it with my fingers. All right, so this is the Martinez. Uh, uh, I'm going to toast to Curly uh, Martinez, uh, Data, who was here for 98 years. And uh, we miss him every day uh, since his passing. Oh, I have a feeling he would love this drink, actually. All right, so go ahead and bring the kitties in. We're going to read How to Babysit a Grandpa. So come on in, kids. <laughs> so this down here. And of course, I've got my old man uh, reading glasses here. This is by the lovely Jean Reagan. And it's part of uh, a uh, hilarious series of how-to books. He needs to sit down. So, sorry I didn't prep that for you. Not really close there. <laughs> a little too close. Ah, just makes my nose look bigger, and I don't need that. Okay. And illustrations by Lee Waldich. Babysitting a grandpa is fun, if you know how. When your grandpa rings the doorbell, what should you do? Hide! That's what you should do. You might wiggle and want to giggle, but don't yell, Grandpa! Shh! Not yet. Not yet. Now, how to stay quiet. Here's a couple tips. Pretend you're a shark waiting for lunch, act like a pirate spy, and be as still as a lion statue. And as soon as your grandpa says, I give up, pop out and shout, here I am, here I am. Now, when your mom and dad leave, pat your grandpa's hand and say, don't worry, they always come back. Then, right away, ask him if he's hungry. Now these are the snacks that you can have for a grandpa. Ice cream topped with cookies, olives served on fingertips, anything dipped in ketchup, and of course cookies topped with ice cream. Now after snacks, it's time to take your grandpa for a walk. Now when it's cold, bundle up. When it's Sunday, sunscreen up, especially the top of his head, because grandpas tend to be bald. Remember to grab his hand when you cross the street and remind him to look both ways. Now what to do on a walk? Step over sidewalk cracks, look for lizards, cool rocks, and dandelion pups. If there's a puddle or a sprinkler, show them what to do. Splash! Now when you're back at home, have him shut his eyes while you get ready. And then, how to entertain a grandpa. Somersault across the room, put on a scary play, and show off your muscles. Now, you may want to have some extra tricks, because grandpas, they always clap for more. It's a, it's a fact. Now, pretty soon he'll want to join the fun, so play with your grandpa, too. Now, how to play with a grandpa? March with your drum, give him a kazoo, and build a private pirate cave. And make sure you can both fit. That's very, very important. Now, watch out for sharks in the water. Do not let your feet touch the floor. Very, very important. When your grandpa says, nap time, it's time for his nap. So the best way to put him to sleep is to have him read a long book over and over and over and over. <sighs> now, even if you're sleepy too, babysitters have to stay awake, okay? So while he naps, draw a picture for his fridge. Now, here's some things you can draw for, draw for grandpa. A pirate shark battle, your favorite dinosaur, you and your grandpa splashing in a puddle, then Wake up your grandpa. Now, you might want to try lifting him with your muscles or tickling his nose and his toes or singing on top of old Smokey softly and louder and louder and louder. Now ask, will mom and dad be home soon? And your grandpa will look at the clock and say, yikes, soon, very soon. Now, good babysitters can't leave messes. So turn on some bouncy music and get to work clean up all the toys. Now when you hear mom and dad, grab your grandpa's hand, pull him behind the couch, show him how to be quiet. Now go back and check how to stay quiet. And whisper, see grandpa, they always come back. The end. The end. <laughs> now comes the hardest part, goodbye time. Now, how to say goodbye to a grandpa. Surprise him with the picture you drew. Give him a hug and a kiss, and then a hug and a kiss, and then a hug and a kiss. And ask, 
when can I babysit you again? And that is how to babysit a grandpa. And I know from experience, being a papa, Joaquin's the grandpa, but, but this is also how to babysit a, grandpa, a papa, because Emery is the best babysitter in the world. So that's our book for tonight. That's our cocktail. I'm going to leave that there so Joaquin can have, uh, can have some. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow night with a new book and a new cocktail. And it's 95 degrees out here in LA, thus no fire. Um, but until next time, remember, the speakeasy is closed. See you guys later.